you came to lead this airline at a very critical time, March 2021, at the thick of, of COVID. If you look back now, a few years later, post-COVID, what state is China Airlines in? Right now, we are coming back. We are coming back. The passenger is uh, above the 50% uh, same volume uh, compared with the 2019 mm. pre-COVID. And for the first half, 2023. Uh, but right now, we are looking for the very significant increasing at the second half. We will have the 70% to 80% coming back compared with the pre-COVID. And we are very confident about this increasement. When do you think you'll get back to pre-pandemic levels? Uh, according to the IOTA forecast, probably need to uh, wait until 2025. We saw cargo demand was boosted and, it, and in some ways really did save your airline mm -hmm. during the pandemic. In fact, you made nearly record revenue during 2021. That sort of trend is reversing now mm -hmm. and cargo demand is stabilizing. W where do you see the, the bottom? Where is that going to settle? I would say that uh, the demand of the cargo is not as high as before. And, uh, but we, we, we will try to find a new balance, which is not the sports shoes. <laughs> the new balance between the cargo and the passenger. And so we, we will try to, uh, try to find out uh, how many uh, percentage we needed, focus, uh, put the, the, the capital in the, in, the, in the cargo. So what is that new balance? What is the right mix between passenger and cargo now, you think? We're still looking for that because that need to be uh, dynamically evaluation. For, for that, but probably go back to the uh, before two, 2019, it's about the 30 to 70 percent ratio. China Airlines <laughs> recently made some new orders for the Boeing Dreamliners 787. You have orders for the Airbus A321 Neos that will help you replace a large part of your passenger fleet with some room to grow, too. Is China Airlines looking for new fleets? Uh, maybe we would looking for the new uh, fleet uh, to replace the 777, which is the long haul and the trunk loot. Maybe we, we were looking for another uh, new airplane more over than the 777 or the maybe 350, 1000. It's all the target we are looking for. We, we have a 24787 uh, Dream, Dreamliner and uh, we have the option to decided uh, how many dash nine, how many dash 10 we need. So once we decided the numbers of the dash 10, then we might rethink it. Uh, can it be replaced the route used by the triple, triple seven? So maybe during that time, we will know better, much better than how many airplane uh, new airplane we need mm. to replace 777. I wanted to get your take. You mentioned a little bit more about sustainability, this whole kind of net zero carbon emissions. You set a target for that for the mm -hmm. company as well. Um, how do you look at it in terms of a cost perspective? How is this going to cost you this decarbonization? Who's going to end up paying for it? Will that sort of be passed through to consumers, for example? There is no more cheap ticket in the airline because every cost is going uh, sky high already, uh, in special for those uh, ground agent and uh, the, the, the overfly permit. And also this one, uh, how to Im reduce the emission of our uh, carbon dioxide. But uh, I think this need to be a lot of work and mm -hmm. special for that uh, cost of the SAF. What, what we call that uh, sustainable fuel, uh, aviation fuel. Yeah. The cost is about the triple than the, than, than the fuel we are using now. We were doing our best to make a profit, to try to compensate this kind of uh, increasing cost. But I think the passenger need to pay some part of it and uh, to, to, to try to make the earth more healthy.